Ladies and gents, we have a sponsor. Beer52 have agreed to sponsor the podcast. Amazing news, and there's brilliant news for you guys as well. We'll talk you through it now. Rob, as you know, I've been absolutely balls deep in craft beers for a few years now, and I love finding those little hidden gems that you don't find in supermarkets, and that is where Beer52 comes in. The best thing about it, Joe, is that they're offering a free case of eight craft beers sourced, curated from over the globe. All you need to do is go to www.beer52.com slash fish on and cover the $5.95 for postage. Beer 52 is the world's most popular craft beer discovery club with over 100,000 members that they send a brand new case to every month. Each case is a different theme and recent cases have included beer from New Zealand, the USA, Ireland, the Alps and loads of the best small batch breweries in these British Isles. If dark beer is not your thing, you can simply choose the light option and your case will come from the award-winning beer magazine, Ferment and a Tasty Snack. Don't worry though, if you do change your mind, you can pause or cancel your account at any time. Just go to www.beer52.com slash fish on to get your first case of eight beers for $5.95. That's www.beer52.com slash fish on. Hello, Rob. Hello, Smokey Joe. Oh, I mean, right. Andy Finley face pots fell off. Oh, no. What, a homemade one, is it? Yeah, the class. Like fishy in history, that is it. Yeah, a thing of beauty. Yeah. A thing of beauty. How are you doing? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I've had a fresh trim, even bolder than I was before. Yeah, you're looking fresh. Yeah, my me, me sons, me sons, well, both of them, because they've both latched onto it, they're calling me Humpty Dumpty now. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, because yeah, they watched their uh, pussing boots last night. Yeah. I can see it. If I put Humpty. like a brick effect here, it looked perfect. Yeah, perfect. Just me, <laughs> little egg poking <laughs> over the top. <laughs> Barry, I, I, I'd, I'd apologise for our lack of podcasts recently, but... We've both been out fishing, haven't we, and enjoying yeah, it? Yeah, I've been really enjoying it, getting out fishing. I've been, um, I think I've been three times in the last week, which is which is pretty good. Right, Two yeah. matches and a bit of bit of filming and a few bits and bobs. Really, really enjoyed it, really yeah. enjoyed it. And it's the weather's lovely. not been too bad. I know it's been a bit damp, but it's not been too bad. It's just been good to be out. Even even Wednesday, I, I went on a match and the forecast was pretty rubbish, but it wasn't yeah, even let's that dive, bad. Let's dive into it. Talk about Wednesday's match. Yeah, went to Makings. We both went on Wednesday, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. So you went, went Makings. I went Makings. You went to South to My Well, one of my old sort of like stomping ground sort of mm. thing. I, I ought to go Makings a little bit more often. Yeah, I think we're really both should. in that situation, really. It's funny yeah. though, isn't it? Because I don't ever see like weekend open matches. I mean, I'm sure they're on, but I don't know whether it's a bit of a I close shop or... I think we're Makings, you know, and I don't want to talk bad of Makings by any stretch of the imagination, but I think where Makings has let itself down over the years and where other fishers have moved on is that Makings have never ran their own matches. They've never ran open matches themselves. They've always relied on clubs yeah, turning up or shop running them or they've never took control of that side of it. So maybe if they took control of it, they'd have a bit more of an now, open scene. So yeah, new, new open scene. Um, new owners, sorry. Yeah. But I, I mean, think the open scene drives these fisheries on. So if you look at a lot of fisheries up and down the country, when they've when they've really kicked on, especially with mm. club bookings, which is obviously, we all know where the money is, it's in clubs. It's the open matches that sort of advertise the fishery. Absolutely, yeah. The big weights from the open anglers and the Wednesday the names matches, going Thursday there matches, and... the names going there, the names doing features there. The clubs look at that, the books, yeah. open club matches, and uh, obviously the fishery benefits. Absolutely, yeah. But I mean, I've fished opens over the weekends, but... Every time I've ever been, I've always been on either phase two or phase three, which are yeah. like the snake lake sort of style lakes, fishing through islands and things like that. I've always done really well there. And then um, on Wednesday, I had a bit, I had some days off to get in. And I thought, oh, I'll go, go make it on phase one, which is obviously big open lakes. There are islands, but they can be 30, 40 meters away. Big fish as well, aren't they? Bob? Big fish, yeah. What would you say average average size fish that you caught? Five, five to eight pound? Five yeah, to I had 111 pound. And I think I... I can't remember if I had 14 or 15 fish, so right. lovely fish. Yeah. Real good snail. I had one little peanut in that as well. So that... And what I, what I liked about your setup was not a pole inside. No, left it in the bag. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I drew A5, which that lake split, lake two split into A and B bank, isn't it? And yeah. A is the better bank, isn't it, as a rule? Seems um, to me. Yes. Yes. I think there's more pegs on Gallower, A bank. isn't it? There's more pegs on A bank than, the, than um, B bank that you'd want, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, drew A5, which, if anyone knows it, it looks the best peg in the world, doesn't it? It's like, 
the island's at, I don't know, 40 odd metres. It's got a big spit to your left where there's like some floating rafts and all this sort of stuff. It just looks so good. And I can imagine this is a day when the wind's belting into that. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. But um, it wasn't. It was flat calm. And uh, it was real nice because I just looked at my peg. I spoke to Finn, obviously, because he's, he's a, you know, he's and then the we was on the phone, weren't we, when I drew my peg. Yeah. And uh, obviously you mentioned about fishing like long poles, pellets and stuff like that. And it just got to my peg and it just didn't look, it just didn't no. look like one. I think you need the wind going down into it to fish pole. It was flat count. The water level's really low as well at the minute. Right. Um, it just didn't look, didn't look good. So I just went with a rod only approach, set a method up for the island, a uh, bomb to these floating rafts. And then I set a little mugging wagger up just in case I uh, got a few opportunities at some point. Um, and the method was rubbish to be fair. <laughs> Right. I chucked it across, expecting that Finn says, I'll oh, just set that one rod up and you'll, you'll just win. I, I know, like, oh, but right. again, if the wind was blowing down there a little bit, I think the method would have been all right. Yeah, but it was so flat against the bank. Um, and I'm chucking it in. I was chucking it like pretty decent, to be fair. And it, after like an hour, I just wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't getting any signs. And Daz, to my right, he was, he was probably on 10 fish at that point. Well, not massive fish, but he was catching like four pounders on the method. And he was just chucking it in dead nice against the island. It was going round never looked like doing that for me um then i was feeding this bomb line really heavily with eight mils and then um it just was like one of those days where it was just an odd fish here and there um yeah. and and then last sort of 90 minutes it really came alive on that bomb um it was solid <laughs> it yeah it sounded in. like a nice match it sounded oh, like it just nick a few fish during the middle of the match and then obviously you get if i'd have been a bit out. sharper i'd have probably really really stuck on the method what would it 129, I had 111. I was third. Right, so had, what, what are you saying? Three more fish? Yeah, I've lost three fish in the last half hour that broke my main line. So, really? Yeah, they're running off under this raft. And obviously, I'm on my clip trying to like pull them away as hard as I can. And they're going oh. one way and I'm pulling the other. And it's dink. And I was like, oh. And it just oh. reminded me. It was good. I'm so glad I went because it's been years since I've done any of that sort of fishing, really. Yeah. And um, little things like I've, like for the last few years, I've always used five pound main line. And like you just can't, can you, for them big fish? No. Um, so obviously that's getting upgraded, and it just, yeah, it's just good lessons. And like, if I'd have been a bit sharper with my mugging waggler, I'd have been, I'd have probably caught another two or three maybe on that. Um, just little things, isn't it, that you're out of practice with, really? Yeah, just, just, and especially even the guys that are, have been doing that style of fishing, mm. we've all had what ten weeks off. Mm. Just getting back and going out and going, ah, yeah, I remember now. Yeah. I need a stronger line. <laughs> you yeah, just little it, things it, like that. It's just, it's just silly, really, because I've never, ever, ever broke line, ever. But right. then, for, obviously, that was an extreme circumstance, and my gear wasn't up to the task, and, that, and that's just how it was. And I suppose if you're fishing to a clip and you've got to pull them and you're fishing against your clip... You but need it's different, isn't it? If you're chucking up against an island, they can only yeah. go left or right. But with that, I was chucking up against the raft and they were going through the raft. Yeah, so, it's so you've, got to, you've got to pull them. Yeah, and it was really frustrating because I think I had 10 in a row near enough like 10 in 10 chucks and every single one of them just swam away from it. And I was like, this is brilliant. I'm just, and I was cruising to the victory and then right. three, I actually went and got another net, put another net in because it's a 60 pound net limit there. And I had two skimmers. So that wiped one net out. And I thought, well, I'm close on both my nets now. So I went and put another net in. I thought I've got 40 minutes to go here, another 40 pound in there and I'll win. And uh, <laughs> I just chucked out, line broke. I was like, oh, brilliant. Rigged right. up again, chucked in, <laughs> broke. Lucky, <laughs> lucky you had enough line on your reel. Yeah, I've freshly done it as well. Right. <laughs> I did it the day before. <laughs> but no, it was, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I don't, like I say, I don't do a lot of like bomb pellet and that. And even that, I was like learning on the job, really, like feeding patterns and stuff. It's ever so yeah. interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, you said that we're all, they were picking off the bank at the end of the match. Yeah, they were, yeah. I was, I was, basically, there's like a little dot island and then the rafts on the surface and then, then the main island in the lake. Right. <laughs> and I was, I was chucking about a metre off this little dot island. Um, but obviously, an odd pellet goes onto the bank. And it's, you can see the bottom. It's gin clear. Like, and it's, it must only be that deep. And at the end, you can see them trying to get the pellets. Right. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's yeah. About, you know, obviously, from a venue that you think these fish are so crafty and so you just can't catch them. We spoke about this. They just love pellets there, don't they? Yeah, they do. For whatever reason, those fishery pellets, those green swimsuit pellets, yeah. the fish just love them, don't they? they and, yeah, they love them. And when they're on them, it just it reminded me of it, because you'd think, wouldn't you, a method, you'd chuck it to the thing, but those big carp love crunching pellets, don't they? Them big mm. pellets. 
And I think I think as well, it's the fact that they have to move between each pellet and to eat it. Whereas yeah. you can catch them. Whereas a method feeder, they come up, suck, suck, suck. They can probably get rid of all the get rid of the stuff that they don't want by the hook and the hook bait. Whereas a pellet, they have to pick it up, move, pick it up, move, pick it up to the next one, move, and yeah. that's when your hook length tightens and they bolt off. And well, the, the funny thing, obviously, I use the old ICS bomb system, right? And I kept putting a method on because obviously you can do that. Yeah. I'll just, and I thought a method's got to be better. It's a target. Never yeah. caught one on it. Not one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bomb I could catch. But it was like you trick it out. You could almost. I didn't say I didn't use stopwatch, but if you had done every bite, would have been about 50, 50 seconds ish. Yeah. Um, and it, they must hear your pellets because what I was doing, I was feeding twice, casting right in amongst them, putting it on the rest. By the time I'd sunk the line, it was like going. It was round. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. yeah. They must hear them pellets and just follow. Do you think down. you know, know the bomb noise? Do you think they hear the bomb come in? So spladoosh, mm. back off for 20, mm. 30 seconds, feel safe, come back in. That's when they pick up the pickles are. And I think when you actually think about it, even a pouch of eight mils, it's probably not that many pellets, is it? No, it's probably only eight or ten pellets when you actually think about it. So yeah, and those big carp, they chew straight through them, don't they? Yeah, straight away. Yeah, and um, obviously you've got the odd, you've got an odd skimmer there. You've got some carp. Yeah, it's yeah, nothing yeah. to them. But it's nothing. Once they're feeding, obviously it's, it's nothing, is it? That baby. No. But it's it brilliant, and like just chucked a waggler, and I just never do that sort of fishing, and I just yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go again soon. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, a, it's a nice little match as well, isn't it? It nice is. Little. And I was funny enough, John Adamson just posted actually on Facebook. I noticed while I was waiting for you to come on, um, he was telling everyone about how he's how you know his thoughts after running a couple of matches now. Because mm. he um he does a rolling draw in the morning. Yeah. So he, he sets it up at the back of his car and he puts a bucket for the money. You put your money in, he draws you a peg, you go to your peg. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's there's no like interaction almost. It's like yeah. and uh and like he does a weigh in like he has a little frame that you put the fish in and he's got a Did the weighing go smoothly. Perfect. Was it? Perfect. Like and then he just puts the money on the thing at the end and then shouts you out and you go and get it. It's like I was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. And that must be happening at every venue across the country, right? It is. Yeah. Well so I fished at, I was on the way to Southfield on mm. Wednesday and we were chatting, obviously I've got makings on my doorstep. Yeah. I've got, got probably three or four other commercial fisheries. Within 25 minutes, all running a midweek match for me to yeah. go on. Good chance of catching a big weight of fish. And I'm <laughs> making the hour and a half journey up to Southfield to try and catch. But how many were there, Bob? Well, this is the thing. There's always 50. Always. And I'll be going again on Wednesday when there'll be 60 there. And yeah. there's some decent money to be won as well. The standard of angler is really good. I love the fact that everyone's in a line. It's, all, it's probably as close to like international style fishing. As you can get in this country for obviously feeder feeder work, so it's, yeah. so it's brilliant to go and do. Um, the weights are low though. It's bream and skimmer fishing, the especially at this time of year. Yeah, this well all year I'd say. <laughs> you can have the they can have a, the odd glory day where yeah. the wind's hacking into you and you sit on your own, you get a couple of spare pegs. But usually the weights are low. Double figures is is always a pretty good weight there. Yeah. Um, I drew next to Lee, Lee Kerry. So obviously me and Lee are talking all the time. And we just wanted a break from each other, if, if, to be honest. And obviously we drew <laughs> next to each other. He, um, we fished with quite a similar match all the way through. It's been nip and tuck all the way through. Small amounts of bait, little bits of little small hook bait. Mid-match, I've pulled out a two decent fish, which is like <laughs> at Southfield. You, you just can't, can't do it. it. Can you? Yeah. And obviously, it's because I'm rusty as well. Not, that's my first match for like 10 weeks. Um, didn't quite switch lines. I, I, and I usually do well at Southfield because I can read the venue quite You're well. You're good at that, I think. Switch, switch lines at the right time. Eat an extra fish out of each line. That sort of fishing. Mm. Really good hard feeder fishing. And I just didn't get it right at all. Going into the last half hour, me and Lee, they're like, you cannot separate us. You cannot <laughs> separate us. We're going in, we're neck and neck into the last half hour. And Lee's um, really, really, he's like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And he's had a mess around with like, a, he, he said, I'm going to try this, this uh, a daft idea. I've got this ground bait I want to try. I, I'm just going to chuck it short. So he chucked a couple of feeders of this ground bait short. Um, did that at the start of the match. So five hours previously. And he thought, oh, I'll just have a chuck on it. Like 15 meters out, he's chucked on it. And he's messing around, looking away, doing something. His tip's gone round. He's 
pulled into a big fish. He's got it halfway back and it's come off. And obviously I'm in hysterics because he's lost. I couldn't help myself. Because <laughs> um, that would that was the fish that was going to hammer the nail in to beat me. Yeah. Next to cat, he's had a little tiny fish. Next to cat, he's had a three pound bream. Next to cat, he's had a three pound bream. And in the space of like 15 minutes, <laughs> he's like, just like See, Rob. <laughs> yeah, he's just, just pulled away. You know, just, oh, it was just. He won the match as well, didn't he? Then he? So he won the match. But this is what I'm talking about low weights. He's won the match with just over 30. Tight margins, isn't it? I've had like nine pounds. You always feel, you come away thinking, mm, if I had done this or I only done that, or if I'd just got lucky, if I'd have made the most of my first hour, maybe. Just let, all the questions that you're asking yourself on the way back. Good yeah. fishing. Having said that, there was some rock hard areas where yeah. people were catching just like three or four pounds, but that's the price you pay for that sort of fishing, I guess. It Time is. Match. It is. And uh, it was funny, I was, I was messaged you last night, like, since going feeder fishing. I've been beaten more times off the next peg than I ever, 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 ever had when I was yeah. pole fishing all the time. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? I just I don't think, I don't think it's naturally, necessarily uh, angling ability, but no, it's no. fishing, because everyone used to call it a bit of a leveller, didn't they? It is definitely a leveller, mm. because I think there's, there's always that chance, especially on like natural venues, where someone could literally just chuck out and catch two bream. It does happen, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, yeah. That's not to say, obviously, Lee's rubbish at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I think that, Lee's that is pretty good. That is isn't it? Like, yeah. like, Holcroft all winter, you'd be like, oh, I'm fishing this dead nice, and someone dropping at four metres, which they do there, catch two yeah. bricks and beat you, and you're like, oh, yeah. great. <laughs> I mean, I looked at Southfield, and I thought, there's tweaks here that I can make to my kit. Mm. So, firstly, I had to blame my, myself for not just being sharp enough. So, mm-hmm. that's just a case of getting, getting back up to speed, fishing a little bit, getting match fit again. But there was little tweaks on my kit and, you know, what I was doing bait-wise, yeah. kit-wise, hook baits, things like that. So there's a lot of progress to be made there, I think. But yesterday I went to Boston and I come away a little bit dejected because... I feel like you've been really hot on this this before lockdown. You was really, like, messing with your pellets a lot, getting your feeders right, weren't you? Hook baits. Yeah, well, I, well, I feel I'm up to... I'm feeling, obviously, all that, really happy. Mm. And that's, my, that was my, that's why I come away a bit dejected yesterday because I, I, I come away from the bank thinking nothing really wrong with what I'm chucking in. Nothing, really, nothing wrong with hook baits, yeah. feeders. And I, and I know that because I've caught loads of fish doing it in the past and I've been messing around with that's been what I've been, like you say, quite hot on. So what I'm chucking in, obviously hybrid feeders, we get my pellets perfect, hook baits, really working on those sort of things, flavourings, you know, I love the, all the flavouring stuff. Um, I didn't do the whole of our section of fish poor, to be fair, mm. whole of our section of fish poor. But I come off the bank thinking, I don't know what I'd have done differently today. That's the, yeah, that's the... So my sharpness in the match just wasn't there. Mm. But I, even now, I don't know what I'd have done differently. So I don't know whether it's just a funny time of year because our whole section of fish poor. Mm. Um, to my left, though, he had 50-odd pound. I, had, I ended up with 38 pound. He had 50 pound. Um, Andy, I'm sure his name's Andy. It was next. Um, he had 50-odd pound. He was second in the section. So he's like 20 pound ahead of me. He's had two big fish, two big carp, which has obviously made the difference. Yeah. But I should have been catching those two big carp. He's had a spare peg as well. Makes a big difference, I think. Still, I should be, I should be it's, catching it's, 50 pounds at Boston. And I just, I'm just racking my head thinking everything's right that I'm chucking in. So it's got to be down to my timing, timing moving yeah. lines, making decisions during the match. Yeah. Or is it just that time of year where you can't really force anything? Because I no, felt you okay. couldn't force anything at all yesterday. Because it, 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 it just proves it, doesn't it? Like, and then obviously your windows of actual action can be quite short at the moment. Yeah. Uh, especially on these commercials like the older ones makings especially a prime example it's the fish in there what 20 odd years old at older, least yeah at older. least yeah and um, you know they're wise fish yeah and like for the first hour honestly i, I was like you i'm not going to catch anything today right. but even, even there where they're so hard to catch for 45 minutes to an hour at the end they were like lambs to the slaughter so right. it's like even there if you get it right get your timings right and be in the right place and make the most of it. Like I could have easily won the match on Wednesday. Right. You know what I mean? If I'd have been sharper. So there's more to come. Is that what you're saying? Right. Well, it's just like, it just proves it, doesn't it? Like you just need to get it right. That what are you operating at at the minute? 90%? Yeah. Oh. You're at 90. 
62. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'm about at fifty percent of that. I was all right actually on Wednesday. I just it was just that last little half. I was I was I was I was doing really well, and that last half hour I just fell apart. Right, and it's unlike me that because I don't normally have meltdowns, but I had a meltdown. No, right. I was laughing because well, me and the bloke next to me because he said he'd drawn that peg before and he'd had exactly the same thing happen to him. And he's like, he's, and before the start, he, he was shouting down. He says, "You'll get broke under there." I'm like, "Nah, of course I won't get broke." And, he, and we're half an hour to go. He's like, you've been broke yet? I'm like, nah, of course I haven't. And three yeah. times in a row. Yeah, I wonder if you, if, even if you'd had stronger mail on, do you think you would have been able to pull, pull them away? Yeah, I think so. Do you reckon? Just that split moment, innit? Yeah. Just that split fraction of them. Even if I'd just got my clip off a millisecond sooner. Was know. it, was, was that, was it? Do me on the clip, yeah. Yeah, would you, if you'd have got your clip off, would they have still ran through and snagged you up? Don't know. Don't know. I don't even know if there's a snag there. I don't even know if there's a snag there, Rob. There's, there's obviously something. No, there's just that there, boom. Right? I don't, don't think there's yeah. anything underneath. Don't know. Just the boom runs across. Yeah, don't know. So you'd have run around the island. It might have sheared you off around the island. Yeah, maybe. But, um, but now I was really happy with all like, my rigs. and The only thing, I, I probably, my method mix probably wasn't quite right. Probably needs right. the three mil pellets, aren't they, there? Yeah, but you can obviously get ones, twos, well, and threes. Well, I didn't threes. know that. I thought they were just threes. Yeah. Twos are, must be quite a new addition to that range, though. Um, they were, they were, they're not really a publicised addition, I'd no. say. So I always remember Roly. Roly used to catch, Roly McAnina. He used to catch loads on a method feeder mm. at, um, at Makings. This is the early days of the swim stim pellet, pellet sores. Um, era. Fish era, yeah, the fishery pellets. They used to catch loads of fish. Um, and he used to do it a little bit different to Finn. He used to use a slightly, slightly bigger feeder. He used to use three mils on his feeder because, again, mm. you couldn't get the two mils. And he used to catch with them three mils. He used to catch those. And you mentioned um, Ant King, poor old mm. Ant King. Yeah. Um, he had a right run there, didn't he? He had a right run there. He used to use, I'm sure he used to use threes mixed with the ones. That's, and, that's kind of what I felt like. I felt like I could have done with some of the ones just to fill in the gaps the gap, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, lessons. But, but you can obviously get them all there, can't you, in the morning? Yeah, I didn't even know the cafe was open, to be fair, because I, I, they're just what I had left from my previous makings campaign. Right. Um, but there you go. It's yeah, living, good fishing. Like, the, the sad part about yesterday is, got back to the car park, chap mm. next to me, he'd been beat by the section, uh, for the section by five pound. And he's had his van broke into. Exactly. So What, during know, the match? During the match, yeah. So obviously, Boston was quite busy yesterday. Mm. And in the past, Boston had the odd break in. But Nigel's got a barrier up now. There's cameras. I don't know what other. I don't know what other. He's got all the deterrents in place, hasn't he? He's got everything there in place. But I tell you what, there's some scumbags around because obviously it it looks like a builder's van. So obviously some some scumbags looked at it and thought. I bet he's got some tools in there because they've not touched any other anything else in the car park. They're just going straight to that van. Mm. Um, it is a sadly it is a bit of a, an issue there isn't it? it's almost a, probably getting to the point where Nigel might even have to look at getting security or yeah well I don't know if it's just there I think it is other places oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's other places it I don't, you know I don't want to pin anything on Boston at all because I, I love going there mm. but it's I don't know is it just society is it just society, I don't know it's just, it, just such a shame but Boston I think that really... sort of thing is going to be rife in, in it as well because people will be struggling financially as well like the People, yeah, know. maybe, maybe, but that's no excuse, is it, to go and nick someone else's gear? I know. Um, the nick some nicked his power tools, and obviously you could tell it's just like I don't know. You could tell the sort of people it, it is because he said, "Look, I've got some really expensive um, impact ones in there that they've opened the boxes, looked at them, but because they're really high end and really sort of like, Can't get if they of tried them. to sell them on, he'd be able to, he'd probably spot because obvious. obviously it's not many too obvious." But they've just nicked the obviously the battery tools, the battery stuff that they can sell on, fifty quid, hundred quid, mm. bit of cash down down the pub or at the car boot, and yeah, such a shame. But one van, one van in the in the car park. I don't know. I don't know what. It, it blows my mind because obviously it's busy. It's middle of the day. Yeah, they must have some. Right loads stones. of people walking around. Loads yeah, of people walking around. They must have some right bollocks on them to do it. Yeah, loads of people. So I'm wondering what. Obviously, they must just pull up in a van. I wonder if they just even walk. They might even walk. Might be walking. Yeah. Might be walking. So obviously there's a footpath there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, um, shame. So obviously we've had a bit of match fishing. Can we just... Obviously there's a rule that's really bugging me at the minute. Obviously there's, 
the contentious thing at the minute is net rules, isn't it? Because yeah, in net rules. But there's one rule that's really bugging me at the moment. Go on, then. And it's the, the one rules. about standing up for mugging. Why right. is that rule that you can't stand up? I don't know. Right, the first rule I've told you this, haven't I? The first time that it came about that I ever seen was when I, I was doing it twenty years ago at mm. um, Peatling Pools, and what then matches turned into the midweekers at Peatling and the Saturday matches. To be fair, at that time. Um, there was a couple of old boys running them, nice, nice blokes, yeah. but they just didn't want to do all that sort of thing. So you see this young lad, I was young then, um, standing Sharp up. Sharp attack. Yeah, Sharp, Sharp as as attack. Yeah, full head of hair, all his life ahead of him. <laughs> and you see this young lad standing up, they're just fishing feeders off, waiting for the fish to turn up at five metres. You see this young lad for the first four hours of the match, Mugging standing his up, to shipping his pole in and out, just flicking the rig at fish in and out fishing like 100 miles an hour and then they can stomach it for a bit but then when two or three more lads start doing it they don't want to yeah, do that yeah. they want to go and have a nice day's fishing um and they said right well how can we stop it well, they thought well we can't stop you actually fishing targeting a fish because everyone wants to maybe have a go at a fish when mm. he cruises by but they'll stop they said we're banning standing up while you're fishing so that's the first time i ever heard of it a long time ago mm. And I know of other couple, a couple of other places that have banned it as well. And well, I'm someone not... that I'm close to, I'm not going to mention the name, but he got a bit of a knuckle, rock and knuckles yesterday because he stood up to have a wee, went and had a wee, got back on his box, and as he's got back on his box, he's seen one, so he shipped it and got it. And then <laughs> they're, they're the moan at him. And, he said, and then they're, they're saying, oh, he's done it like 10 times. He's got up for 10 wees. Has it? Right. And I was just yeah. like... For me, that's like the essence of fishing. Yeah, of like, course it is, yeah. It's watercraft, isn't it? You're spotting yeah. fish, you're looking at the patterns, you're trying yeah. to hunt them, aren't you? Like, but what, what, uh, blows my mind, Rob. Right, sadly, this is, where, this is where I believe match fishing is really lacking. It's lacking in its professionalism. Mm. So there isn't that professional tier. Because even your Fisher Manias, your Maven Match This Is, your Golden Reels, all those really big money matches, they're still not all professional. No. So what you've got now is you've got a lot of a lot of crossover. So you've got some anglers that like fishing in a local club, but they'll have a go at an open match, and you've got some open match anglers, and they they and everyone mixes. So you have to cater for everybody in these matches. And maybe fishing would be better off, both financially, both for new blood for the sport, if there was a professional tier. Like there is in other sports, there is in darts, there is in snooker, golf, and they have their not separate, not totally different rules but they have slightly different rules if i go and play golf in a tournament i can't use the driver i use i have to mm. use a, a driver that conforms to the whatever the rules, PGA yeah. standards or whatever so they have a perfect they have a set of rules and i think we're catering for obviously the anglers that don't want to mm. do all this sort of thing which is a bit of a shame because obviously the top anglers the fishing sometimes with the hand driver on the back which I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Good. I just, it, just bugs, it just really bugs me. I think, like, to me, that is like, we, I keep, yeah. we've done this conversation, that is the essence of fishing for me. Like, yeah, of course. Hunting fish, spotting yeah. them, working out, because that is what mugging's all about, isn't it? Like, on Wednesday, you could tell the ones that you're going to get a chance at because yeah. they were swimming in a different way, but yeah. you're sitting there for 10 minutes observing them. Like, what's yeah. wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of the time, it's because people don't want to do it, isn't it? Mm. And, you know, it's, if a couple of guys, they don't want to do it, or physically they're unable to do it. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. But that's what I'm saying. You've maybe got to either fish in a different way or fish in a way that suits you, yeah. or maybe there's levels. Maybe there's, maybe there's a way of creating a, some sort of levels in the, in the sport yeah, where know. it's not such a problem if you do something that's a bit, a bit out of the box. So it's a shame. It's a shame. But I'll tell you what I did see, moving on to something that's really positive, I was driving to Boston yesterday and I text you because I, it's the first time I've seen it. Eight o'clock in the morning, you drive, uh, I have to drive along the motorway and mm -hmm. Makins is next to the motorway. You can see the yeah, car park. Phase one, can't you? Absolutely rammed. Chocker. Eight o'clock in the morning, absolutely rammed. Anglers all around the lakes, you can see them. The trade must be so busy. Well, I've had it on good authority that rod license sales have gone through the roof over the past few weeks. Right. Um, I can't, can't actually say any more than that, but it's gone, it's gone well. Um, press innovations are absolutely it's mental. 
Yeah. The amount of stuff that... No, every company out, about they're, they're, they're busy. It's mental. Sonya Bates cannot make enough bait yeah. at the minute. It's just fantastic. And obviously my job's out and about filming and I've been out since we were allowed a lot. Have you, found a, quiet, have you found a quiet area on a lake? No. no, no. Even venues that you go to them and it's like there's never normally anyone there. No. Like um, Black Horse Lake at Milton Keynes, for example. Like you yeah. can always have a bit of space there. Yeah. I went there last week with Buckwalt, Michael Buckwalter, and every peg was taken. Right. I went to Rookery Waters with Jimmy Brooks the other week, and there was two pegs left on the whole fishery. And really? as we were packing up, someone was filling his spot. Wow. And it was like, it's fantastic to see. Wow. Um, it really is good. And it's nice, isn't it? There's a bit, a bit of positivity coming out of this. Yeah, great. brilliant. Brilliant. Every match is full. Every venue's full. I went and did a, um, we've seen it, a uh, little pace video yeah. on my YouTube channel. Go and watch it, go and subscribe. And I went and did a little pace video. And I, thought, I was racking my brains where would be a quiet venue because obviously I know everywhere's full. So I've made a few phone calls. Um, little tiny club water. I thought no one will be there. Yeah. If there is, there'll be like one bloke sitting on, sitting on the other side and I can go and fish somewhere else. Got there, absolutely rammed. You could, there was like two pegs left and yeah. someone fished them in the day. You know, I was, I'd gone and, sat in those, gone and sat in one of those two pegs. Yeah, it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing, isn't it? It's like fisheries are just full. And... Mm. Uh, and the tackle shops uh, who are doing like a click and collect, I mean, they can open tomorrow, okay, well, 15th. Yes, they? they can open tomorrow. I'll tell you um, what, they're going to be busy. They're going to be mad busy. And then, yeah, it's brilliant. What do you think? Do you think um, th there's, there's a chance that things could go backwards? I don't think, I don't think. But maybe even if what, people start in, getting poorly again, I don't no. think the economy will go backwards now. I think people have... No, I think everyone's had enough now. Yeah, I think everyone wants to just move forward. And if it does... You know, obviously, if people start getting poorly again, I think maybe there'll be some measures put in place, but I don't yeah. think the economy will go. There's no sign of it, though, is there, at the moment? No. I don't, obviously, I, I, I must admit, I've distanced myself from the news a bit. Yeah. But I've not, I mean, there's, a, there's enough going on in the world now at the minute for there to be another spike, and there doesn't seem to be, does there? So. No, not at the minute. Let's, let's hope, touch wood, that we're getting through it now. Right. Where's you, where are you going this week, Joe? Uh, I'm out with Woodlands View on Tuesday. And I'm out um, doing like a new product demo with one of our agents, Mick Biles, on yeah. Thursday. Uh, and that's it, really, this week. Right. I might even... I've seen, Mick. I I seen might... Mick on Wednesday. Yeah, big Mick. I think he had a few little skimmers, about six or seven hard little day. skimmers. It was hard, hard old day. But he shaved the beard. Has it gone, Is it? Yeah, shaved the beard. Oh, it's just got really long hair. I thought, it's, I, thought it, I thought it suited him, to be fair. He said to me, I just don't want to get involved with beard grooming. So... Fair enough. He, got, he just got rid of it. Okay. but I'm having the, my driveway has been finished this week so I was right. hoping so maybe go Macon's again Wednesday but it's looking like they're coming on Wednesday so I'm going to be here to do that um, well I'm at Southfield on Wednesday for the Feeder, Feeder. Uh, Feeder King yeah which is a brilliant competition Andy so is that um, qualifier for yes but it's, it's all jumbled one. up now isn't it yeah but it's the first qualifier of the yeah. year yeah. obviously it's now because it's the original qualifier for yeah. um, obviously Andy Rend um Mick Axon, Andy Renton. Andy Renton. Brilliant, do a brilliant job. The organised feeder king, 10 grand to the winner at the end of the year. You've got to win your zone, a bit like a um, feeder master sort of mm -hmm. scenario. All at Southfield, you know, that's perfect for me. The, the, apart, apart from the fact it's an hour and a half journey. Uh, apart, from, apart from that, that's I'm that's it. It. Yeah. Everyone's well, happy as well. Everyone was so happy, you know, on Wednesday. They no, caught nothing. No one caught anything. No one cares. Everyone's just so happy. fishing. Yeah. Get to see the mates. So, I must admit, we went to, the first match I went on a lockdown was an open at Shearsby the other week. It wasn't mm -hmm. a big match. I think it was 18 or 19 there. And obviously the lakes at Shearsby are such that you can all talk to each other. Yeah. They're pretty narrow. The people opposite you. Yeah. You could just tell everyone was just so happy to be there. Yeah. Everyone's chatting. Got them to deliver drinks throughout the match. Right. In the cafe. It was, I just loved it. Yeah. I, 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 the the weigh-in as well at Southfield was done really well. Yeah, because obviously it's smaller weights of fish, so you can do it in the bucket. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned with the system that we've got that fish can spill out, or mm. you can't get, you can't, you might miss the net one or two times, or yeah, the think, thing might collapse. Or there's a lot of fisheries are putting like much stricter net limits in place, aren't they, to try and yeah. help people out? It's a really tricky one, that isn't it? Because poor Luke Bamford got obviously not back. Oh, what about um, Luke Bamford? We just say. What a brilliant angler Luke is. Like Luke we were on about it the other day. Angler. He's like, 
he's always been there, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's a fantastic angler. Uh, like he's a proper match winning angler, he is. Natural angler character mm. category. Doesn't really, obviously, everyone has to work at it, but he, he can do, he can do it. But he's a proper match winning angler, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Don't funny about. It. But uh, he's had a few issues with fish out, hasn't he? And then on, obviously, oh, I didn't realise that. I think he had 279 pounds and got lost the whole net. His whole net got But I thought point, he yeah. must have gone way over, but he only went a pound over, didn't he? A pound over, yeah. And obviously, um, which look, so rules are rules, it. and you have to implement the rules. Yeah, no, no, what you can't... If you so, don't, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. It's a tough one, but rules are rules. You have to implement the, implement the rules. But I don't know. I don't know what the crack is with net limits. It's just It seems strange to me when people have got like five, six nets in that... If, if, as long as they're all... Well, they're talking now, aren't they? Like, if you go to Tunnel Barn, because it's fishing that well, you will probably need seven nets with you, which... Wow. I know we spoke with Adam Richards about the Oaks, but yeah, that is just... Not... No, that's another level, isn't it? Entirely. I mean, it's, it, that, that, obviously, maybe that was me in the past. I just don't know if that's me anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'd want to go and do that. No. I don't like it, me, because I totally get the, the net limits, Rob. I really do. But it, it is something else that you're thinking about. Like, even on Wednesday, I wasn't catching a lot of fish. Mm. Um, but even I had to put another net in because I did go over. I had sixty-one pound. Luckily, yeah. he just knocked you back to sixty. Yeah. Um, but I had sixty-one pound, and I basically filled that net up in half an hour. Right. Um, and the other net, I, I had room for one more fish in the other net, and you're like, just I just find it really tricky because I'm focusing on that rather than me fishing a bit. Yeah. The only thing I'd say is because it's not necessarily for fish welfare at the minute, is it? It's, it's so you can lift the net out and do everything yeah. correctly. Yeah. So the Glebe had got their net limit. They used to be a hundred pound. Yeah. A, a bit too much for a net limit, to be honest, but it used to be a hundred pound at the Glebe. And they've brought it down to, I think 50, 50 pound or 56 right. pounds, something like that, 55 pound. That's because their scales bottom out at that. So basically, you lift the net out, you pour it all in the sling, one way, you lift it up, if it bottoms out, that's the weight you get. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not for the fish. It's not, we're not at that level where we're saying, right, it's an 80 pound or 100 pound limit because we don't want you to cram the net full of fish. No, no, it's to try and make it easier. It? It's to make it easy for you. So if you can't lift it out, tough luck, you, you can't lift it out, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. And if it all don't go in the sling, again, tough luck. If it don't, if, so the one that Luke Bamford's got, it was not really... I don't the know. only one that, that I don't know, the one that I can't quite understand, if you can lift it out, I don't see what the difference between pouring twice out of the same key net into the sling. Why is that any different to pouring twice for over two nets? I don't really understand that one. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. I know you know what I mean? Saying. Like, it's just the same fish going yeah. in. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah. But I saw a picture of Adam Wakelin at the Gleave the other day, and he had like six or seven nets in. Right. And I was just like... Phew. I know. <laughs> I don't know. At the end of the day, if I go, if I, I haven't, I've got four, and even yeah. one of them I shouldn't be using because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not a Preston net. Yeah. And uh, like Wednesday, I thought I'm gonna have to take five nets if I go to Makings again, because mm. I wouldn't have needed much longer on the fish to catch another two nets worth of fish. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? A bit different at Makings because obviously Big the bigger fish, and you've got you feel like it's a. I know it's not a relaxed day, but you feel a bit more relaxed. You're not rushing yeah, around catching a, an F1 every minute. So you can pick up a net, put it to the side and do all that. But and it's not, easier like, to add up your fish, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Just like oh, eight pound, nine pound, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but, but the I've, obviously, and again, in such a big match as well. But I think understanding your net limits is another skill you've got to be, get right in a big match. That's another part of being you know, at that level. Mm. Um, and it, obviously Luke's just got it wrong again. Yeah, shame that. But yeah. obviously Andy Power, he's not he's not much. No, he's he's, uh, he's sorted it out, isn't it? Lapping up the glory now. Yeah. What how did he catch? Shallow? Yeah. Um right. I spoke to Powers, he caught and cast the shallow down the middle. Right. And then he, he died he, off he and he a lot of bait? No, I don't think so. He was just nice and steady. And then he um fished across the last last bit when it dived. Right. Did he catch on a jigger or just a normal rig? He, ca he catches on a bit of everything, Andy. He's really busy and he never yeah. stops working. He'll try and he'll try everything. Yeah. That's one thing about Andy. Like, you know, you get your anglers who are like, right, I'm going to fish eight mil pellets today. Or I'm going to fish yeah. this. And fish no, he's really open minded. He, he, he has a bit of everything day, going on. He sets up everything, no matter what match right. he's on. He's got different rods up. He's got different. And he really works his peg. He's, he's brilliant at that. He's a bit like Des. Des is like that. Yeah. Des never just goes, right, I'm just doing this. Like, right. 
So a really open minded was the day. Yeah, like I always think like Des fishes every match almost like it's a White Acres Festival day. Like he'll put a few casters in or he'll put a bit of this over here yeah. and you know what I mean? Like try to keep a lot of different plates spinning really. But obviously works for them. I I get a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. All right, I'm gonna get on there with look after the kids. What you did what, what so you're Southfield and then you're going South, over the weekend? Southfield have I got a match for the weekend? No, I'm going to find a match for the weekend. Because I'm enjoying going. Mm. I'm enjoying getting back in the groove. And I just need need a couple of sessions to get back up to full speed again, I think. Speed, yeah. I enjoy Boston. I, if I can find a match for Boston. Larford. I'd like to go Larford, maybe. Well Tell you what, he, the bites. Methafeeder bites. I love them. You love it. Yesterday, they're bites. They were brilliant. A couple well, of ones. Pull your rod in. You know, um, on Wednesday, you know them book grip arrests? Yeah. Obviously, we do them. A few other companies do yeah. them. I've never used one. Like I've always had it there, but I always just yeah. rest my rod on top of it. Yeah. But on Wednesday, I actually, for the first time ever, actually had to ram it in yeah. because I'm fishing up against that thing. And honestly, the bites were amazing because it was yeah. pointing at it and my rod was down that angle. They were lifting yeah. it off the thing. Yeah. And it was like that in the, in the book grip. Yeah. I just loved it. Unreal, unreal. Brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant. I, I love it when it just obviously from nothing to toad around, you think you're going to lose your rod. Yeah. I love it. It just happens out of nowhere, doesn't it? And you know when you film it, though, it doesn't look the same, does it? No. It doesn't look the same when you film it. You have that glimpse you... of panic, don't you, though? When you yeah, you do, it. yeah. Oh. Like, oh, no, I'm going to lose my rod. I'm going to lose my rod. Yeah. Right, yeah. going. Enjoy your day. Thank you very you much, later. everybody. Listen to our ramblings. Doodaloo. Ciao.